We saw in a previous video that scattered around the outside of the interface are things called panels. In the case on the left-hand side of the tools panel, you can pick up tools that allow you to navigate and inspect content on a page, which is the zoom tool and the hand tool. On the right-hand side, we've seen the pages panel that will allow you in a simple sense to click on a thumbnail and jump to that particular page and navigate. But it will also allow you to add pages or delete pages as well. Now, there are numerous panels inside of InDesign and they all essentially allow you to achieve one particular task. An example of this would be, say for example, here under the window menu, where all of your panels can be found, you've got a section called color. Now, if I wanted to make a brand new color, I could click on the color panel. It would then pop up on screen. I could use the fields for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black to specify an exact color, or I could just hover over and click in the strip of color at the bottom to eyeball a color that I like the look of. But that's all it will allow you to do is mix and create a color. It won't allow you to use that uh, efficiently throughout your document. You'd need to go back to the window menu, into the color section, and then open up a completely different panel called swatches. And this is where you store all the colors you wish to reuse in your artwork for the particular document you're working in. So creating colors is a good way of viewing how panels work inside of all the Adobe applications. So make, working with color is a really good example of how panels work inside of the Adobe Creative Cloud apps. You might create something in one panel, but then if you want to use it efficiently, you'll have to store it somewhere in a different panel completely. It is incidentally possible to just switch to a different set of tools. So if I head up to the word essentials at the top of the screen, it will provide a drop down list of things called workspaces. So everything from advanced down to typography are a series of panels that have been grouped together to address a certain type of task. So if I wanted to, for example, edit text, I could click on the typography workspace. And in here, it'll give me a series of panels now in a button mode, which for example, if I wanted to do edit the characteristics of my text, I could click on the button for character, the panel pops open, I can make edits as I see fit in here, and then click on the button to make it disappear. I could go up to the top and click on the double headed arrow, and that would allow me to expand all these panels open. And I can just dive into each panel in what's called the tabbed workflow. So I could go to glyphs if I wanted to, to look at one of the specific glyph characters in a font family, I could edit text wrapping options by clicking on the other tab. And then right down at the bottom, I've got character formatting options and paragraph formatting options that will pop open when I need them to. So workspaces are a way of being able to change lots of panels all at once. If I go back up to the top, I can go back to the default workspace called essentials. When I click on that, it takes me back to the exact same set of panels that we saw a few minutes ago. Now, workspaces are incredibly useful, but Adobe has to make many assumptions about which panels it thinks you're going to need to use. In the next video, we're going to create our own workspace using just a handful of panels that will allow you to get through most of your day-to-day -day editing inside of InDesign and keep the interface fairly clutter-free.